we're going to discuss speed versus velocity. In order to do that, we'll need to talk about distance versus displacement. We'll talk about dot diagrams and also how we can calculate the velocity of an object. In order to start talking about speed versus velocity, we need to talk about the difference between distance and displacement. Distance is a scalar quantity and displacement is a vector quantity. As a reminder, scalar quantities are represented as just magnitudes, like 30 miles per hour, and vectors are represented by magnitudes and a direction, such as 30 miles per hour north. Distance is a scalar quantity. A definition of distance is how much ground an object has covered. Contrast that with displacement, which is a vector quantity, which is described as how far out of place an object is. Now let's look at this more on a couple examples. Now in this first example, let's say we have an object that's traveled from its starting point, 50 meters east, turns around and travels back 40 meters to the west. Now if we're talking about distance, or how much ground this object has covered, it's traveled a total of 90 meters. Now if we're talking about displacement, it's a little different. Now the motion of the object is the same, but its displacement is how far out of place it is or how far away it is from its starting point. The displacement of the object in this case is 10 meters east, meaning it's 10 meters east out of place from where it started. So from this example, we can see that displacement and distance are very different things. Let's look at one more example that's a little more complicated. In example two, our object starts at point A and ends at point B, but the way that it gets there is very important. At first, it moves north 10 meters, then it moves east 10 meters, then south 20 meters, west 20 meters, and north 10 meters. If we're calculating the distance, then we're looking at how much ground the object has covered, and in this case, it's 70 meters. But if we're looking at the displacement, it's how far out of place it is. In this case, it's only 10 meters to the west. Again, when we compare the displacement and the distance, those are very different numbers and mean very different things. It's important to look at the difference between distance and displacement because these play into velocity and speed. Now, speed, just like distance, is a scalar quantity, meaning it only has a magnitude, whereas velocity, just like displacement, is a vector quantity, meaning it has a direction. So just as we said 10 meters to the east, we must also say a velocity, for example, three meters per second, also has to have a direction, or three meters per second to the west. Now the difference between displacement and distance and velocity and speed will come into play again when we look at how we calculate the velocity of an object, because we'll need that quantity of displacement in order to properly do those calculations. Before we talk more about velocity and speed, we want to look at some ways that we can represent the motion of objects. And one common way that we use to represent motion of objects is what we call motion diagrams or dot diagrams. The best way to imagine this is that we have a car that has an oil leak, and that oil leak drips one drop out of that vehicle every second. Now if that object, now if that car were moving down the road, dropping drops of oil as it moved, when that car was gone, we'd be able to see a path or a diagram of the motion of that object. So let's take a look at a few examples. So if in this example we have a vehicle that's moving at a constant speed or also a constant velocity if we add that direction. As it's moving, it's dropping the oil like we talked about and we can see that the space between each of the dots is the same or the distance traveled between each of the dots is the same as well. Now the space between these dots tells us a lot of information about how the object is moving. If the dots are equally spaced, it tells us that the object has a constant velocity or a constant speed. We use dot diagrams to help us represent and talk about the velocity or motion of objects. Now if we look at this situation where the car is moving at a constant velocity, the distance between each of the dots will be equal. This clues us in to the fact that it has a constant velocity. Every second, it's moving the same distance as every previous second and every second to come. We can also look at other situations where, for example, a car might be accelerating. If the vehicle is accelerating, it's going to be traveling more and more distance between each second or between each oil drop. Here's an example of how that might look on a dot diagram. As the object moves, the space between the dots becomes greater and greater. 
This is how we can identify that an object is accelerating. The same is true for acceleration if it's slowing down. As time goes past and as those drops of oil drop out of our car, the distance between each drop is smaller and smaller, or the object moves less and less distance each second. One thing we can add to our dot diagrams are velocity vectors, which show another way of representing the velocity of that object. This becomes very handy when we are comparing the velocity of objects together and when we start looking for the acceleration of an object. Just as a reminder, when we're talking about vectors, the longer the arrow, the greater the quantity, and in this case, it's velocity. Longer velocity vectors represent a greater velocity than shorter velocity vectors. These allow us to be more specific when we compare dot diagrams to each other. On a dot diagram, we can use the length of the vectors to help us compare the velocity of the object or compare velocities between two objects. This also helps when we're looking at the velocity of an object that's accelerating, because as time goes on, the length of those vectors should change, either increasing or decreasing in length, thereby increasing or decreasing the magnitude of our velocity. Not only can we represent velocity in terms of dot diagrams and vectors, but we can also use equations or math to represent this. Now when we're trying to calculate velocity, we have a standard equation that we're going to use, which is velocity is equal to the displacement divided by time. This is similar to the equation for speed, except for one key difference. Whereas velocity is a vector quantity, we'll use the vector displacement. But speed is a scalar quantity, so we will use the scalar quantity of distance as well. So if we look at the two examples that we use for displacement and distance traveled at the beginning, we can add a time component and figure out the velocity and the speed of the objects and compare them together. In these examples, we're only calculating the average speed over the whole time the object is moving. There's something completely different called instantaneous speed or instantaneous velocity that we'll look at when we're talking about acceleration. The equation for average speed is average speed equals distance divided by time. In example one, we still have the same motion where the object is moving 50 meters to the right, turning around and moving 40 meters to the left. Now again, if we look at the distance traveled, it is 90 meters. Now let's say that took 30 seconds. So in order to calculate the average speed, we would take the distance traveled, 90 meters, and divide that by the time it took to travel that distance, in this case, 30 seconds. Now with that division, that gives us an average speed of three meters per second over the entire motion. Now if we look at displacement and velocity, it's a little different. Again, we have the same motion, but as we calculated before, our displacement was 10 meters east. In this case, when we're looking at velocity, we take the displacement divided by the total time. So we're taking 10 meters east divided by 30 seconds. This gives us a velocity of one third or 0.33 repeating meters per second east. Now we can see that there's a big difference between these numbers and this highlights the difference between the speed or the average speed in this case and the velocity of an object. Now let's take a look at example two. The motion is the same as in these examples, but instead we're doing it in a particular amount of time. In this case, let's say it's 20 seconds. When we're looking at the average speed, in this case, the distance traveled was 70 meters. Again, we're going to calculate the average speed by taking the total distance traveled and dividing it by the time it took to complete that motion. So in this case, we're taking 70 meters, which is the distance, and dividing that by 20 seconds. After our calculations, that gives us an average speed of 3.5 meters per second. Our displacement in this example was 10 meters west. In order to calculate the velocity, we take the displacement and divide it by the time it took for that motion to happen. In this case, again, that's 20 seconds. If we do this calculation, we find that it's one half meter per second west. Again, this highlights the difference between distance and displacement and speed and velocity. 